The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Hi folks, Basil Trapp is sitting for Steve Rhodes. Steve's a little under the weather, so I... I just a little juggling of schedule, and I, I'm, I'm here. So we're looking at uh, the um, – let me just run the numbers. Uh, I'll just a little bit of the Chapman Wave methodology because Steve Rhodes uh, has it automatically, automatically notated. Um, I do not. I have to put every single letter in by hand. This is a leg B in the Dow. It's a brand-new leg B confirmation of a buy mode. If correct, we should still get a peak C and then a higher peak D, and then you've got to be careful. Okay, just make it as simple as that. Uh, we've got the SA all-time high with the Dow trading at uh, 44,652 up 356. It did hit 44,800, and I think, what is it, it's 15. Uh, and now what we're looking at, it's just, uh, I think we've kind of seen the day's high, and I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit of weakness tomorrow, and then, Maybe that traditional spike going into the Thanksgiving close the day before Thanksgiving, and then we'll see what happens Friday. But in the meantime, uh, S&P made an all-time high as well. Also, leg B in the daily chart. And why am I not getting that SPX? There, there we go. Um, with the, we're at the low of the day, at two, up 22.38 to 59.92, gapped up, went to the all-time high, now pulling back a little bit, but it did make a leg E in the weekly chart, QQQ. We've got the QQQ at one, up 159 at 507.38, kind of a red candle, even though it's up and it gapped up. Uh, it's kind of struggling, and the reason is the SMHs are um, down 26 cents at 244.36. So I had a question about NVIDIA. We'll do that now. Remember, Steve's always asking um, everyone out there to be able to give him some symbols to look at, and then he does a fabulous job of analyzing it. So I'm looking at NVIDIA. 152.89 was a peak D. Remember, peak D in the Chapman wave is where other things can happen, and that's exactly what's happened here. It's taken out the low of uh, a week and a half ago. In the 137s, it's gone down all the way to 136.22, trading right now 137.50. And this is what I've been talking about for a little while for my subscribers to my opening call. We've got rotational corrections going on. Even though something can go to a new high, it might be the only one or one of two or three in the sector. And then you've got to be careful because you've got a divergence there. Well, that's what you've got. So it says to me that very likely – uh, NVIDIA has made at least uh, not just a near term, but a sh and maybe not even just a short term top at 152.89. Uh, it's only a leg. Yeah, I have to call it a leg until the Friday close in the weekly chart. If it goes above 152.89, that just continues to move up. But if it starts to pull back and it goes under, it's at 137. If it goes underneath 133, that low that was made back in early November of 130, 180, what was it, 132? 132.11. Um, and that becomes a target on the downside. And then you can start to look at more an intermediate term, meaning weeks of a pullback before you can get a really strong rally to new highs. Most importantly, we're looking at um, the QQQ, as I said, uh, a red candle, even though it's up $1.41 at 507.23. Not even, well, I can't say close. It did get close. Today's high was 5.11.45, and the all-time high is 5.14.66, made around about the 11th of uh, November. Well, if that's the case, then the pattern that I'd be looking at right now is this pattern right here, Chapman Wave falling X formation, where you take the high and you go to lower highs, but much lower lows. And then what you need to see is a snap above that downtrend line, the upper downtrend line, it's an expanding uh, wedge formation. 
and you need to see the upper line be taken out so you can look at the left side highs to see if you can hit that. So QQQ struggling right now, and that's part of this whole rotation. What do I mean by rotation? Leader up 2.48 percent, up 5.92 at 244.68. This is the IWM all-time high as we speak. We waited and waited. We've added to our core position that we bought back in the day after the low of 196.60, August the 5th. On the 6th, I believe it is, we, we went long. We've even had the three times long, and we've had profits we've taken, taken some off. And then we added to our long position – um, what we added the other day, well, no, no, it's not the other day anymore, but the IWM, we were in at 203.66 initially back in the 6th of August, but then we did add to it. The most latest iteration was at 232.31 on the 21st. 21st is, let's just give it a little right there. So we added to the long. I'll just put added right there. And we, lowercase, and what I said to subscribers is um, at 242.40, take some off, and we've done that, 242, we did that. Okay, so we've just taken a little bit off to the one. Now, what I wanted to add to today, I should have for three days, I've been saying I should add to one that we've had fantastic gains in, and... Um, I didn't do that for the third day. And it could have been up in the 68. We were in the, along the Solventum Corporation Healthcare Spinner from Triple M way back here from right there. Back uh, in August in the 57 area, we took something off as it was moving up to the high that was made at 73.40 peak E and then waited for a pullback. Then we've added and new new subs, um, subscribers, subscribers who never got in, got into the next one waiting for the peak D, which went to 77, 17, we, to that day that it had earnings and then it turned down. We took our profits, uh, some profits, and I wanted to add back at the 200 period exponential moving average at 66. It was actually 65, never did, and here it is at 71. Ah, sometimes it's just dumb. You, I just we had positions, we had natural gas position, which looked like it was going to do very well. Then we got stopped out on that big pullback, and lo and behold, here it is up again at 15.35 up a dollar three. So yeah, this is very good action in uh, natural gas for the very first time. It had this recuperation very quick recovery and now it's acting much better on and if we'll go back in again uh, all right so with that said <clears throat> uh, what am i missing i'm missing gold um gold is trading right now the continuous contract is down 80 at 2632 middle east uh, talks peace Ah, that's what you'd expect. You'd expect that in crude oil as well. Lo and behold, crude oil is down over two dollars at sixty-nine. Yeah, it gets repelled at the two hundred period moving average all the time, and you've got the dollar, the dollar which is uh, down eighty-one ticks at one hundred eight, one hundred six point seventy-four. I'm watching this closely. This kind of has the characteristic of a peak D, but it is a C. So there should be one more pop to the upside. But I think the dollar is starting to get a little bit tired, even though it's at a new recovery high. I'll be back. Basil Trapp is sitting in for the hour that Steve does his show. And uh, see you in a moment, because the Dow is up 380, S&P's up 23. Big differential there. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer. 
the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Hi folks, Basil Chapman City for Steve Rhodes Hour. We're looking at the Dow up uh, 401, S&P's up 24.83, all-time highs. We're looking at the VIX index. Now, this is fascinating. Look, the VIX index is trading at 14.84. Now, the most recent low is 14.86 back in uh, August. But if you're looking at the uh, volatility index monthly chart, that's the VIX index, you'll see that there was that spike to 65.73 back in, was it July or August? And then a, a, a complete tumble to the downside. And the weekly 200 period moving average right here is, is at 18.18. Uh, .18. And look, the majority of price movement has been, except for occasional one or two or three bars, weekly bars above, uh, he, all the time it's been underneath there and it's been to the 11s, it's been to the 12s, the 13s. So it's a little bit overbought right now on, uh, on a purely tactical basis. So when I see that, my impression is that, let me just go to the daily chart, move it over so you can see it a little clearer. My impression is that Fund managers have buy, been buying insurance, and they certainly were buying insurance into the uh, election. And now what they've done is they have to kind of unload that a little bit. And that just says to me that we've got, at least in the short term, because it is still holding in the 14s. In fact, today, even in 1527, <clears throat> suggests to me that the weight of evidence is for further gains. On the short term, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, looking into media term, I can see 30 to 33 being hit possibly, may, possibly in January. It could be sometime in December. In other words, what I'm really looking at here is kind of a buy the rumor and then sell the news because reality sets in inauguration day, the 20th of January, and I think in the interim period between the last week of December, my rule of thumb has always been that if the, if the Dow, I'm just basing it on the Dow, if the Dow is able 
usually I see the markets, but I'm focusing on the Dow. That's kind of what I'm talking about. If the Dow survives September, October weakness and the last week of October to the second week of November is closer to the all time highs, the markets invariably close towards the highs of that year. But we didn't have the big tumble in uh, October, September, October. So I'm thinking there's just a chance that we got get this all out the way, the upside, and then we have almost like a fresh start coming into the new year because the rotation that we're going to that we are seeing right now with the, and my rule of thumb always has been that the semis, the semiconductor uh, group, which is the 21st century oil of the 1900s and, and 2000s cannot be ruled out as an important ingredient and where they go, the market tends to go, except for those times where the semis actually hold well but don't make new highs. At the same time, as there's this rotational aspect to the general market, and that's what we've got. We've got a rotation where um, you've got weakness in some areas, but you've got new strength in uh, sectors. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if you look at the XLF, my relationship has been for the last couple of months, well, about six months, I've been saying uh, S&P 500 strong. You should see the weak link, the, the Russell 2000 start to catch up. My rule of thumb has been when the financials do well, especially when they're making all time highs, you have to see now, the market doesn't know that it has to see. I'm just saying, you have to see the, uh, the KRE, the regional bank sector, do well and try to get to new highs. And it looked impossible just a month ago. We were down under 60. Where are they now? 70 at 220, uh, two, up 221. We have two long positions that we use. One is a core, one is a trading position in this in the KRE, the regional. And I'm thrilled that today we're not only making a leg D, but I said to subscribers, I can't remember if I did it in my video, I do an hour, at least an hour long video uh, for subscribers every single weekend look called the market overview. And uh, that's separate to my hour and a half webinars that I do, which are more specific to trying to introduce other areas and other things into the picture. And look, here we are up to 19 at 69.98 for the KRE, but the last high was at 67.96. So if we can, I don't want to just see it pop and drop. If we can close two sessions past, I mean, up in the, in the uh, above 69, then we've avoided the double top pattern, I believe, and we're looking to the potential. Now, this is so interesting because this is in leg D, a very clear leg D. In the Chamber of Methodology, we look for a buy signal to get upgraded to a buy mode, meaning that there should be at least four higher peaks. A, peak A, peak B is the second, peak C is the third, peak D, a higher high is, is the fourth, and then other things can happen. Well, the weekly chart is just recycled to an E, could be an instant restart, but let's just say it's an E for now. Uh, the monthly chart is in a huge leg D. The all-time high is 78.81 back in January of 22. It certainly had a, a, a more than 50% decline going to the 34.12 area uh, back in May of 2023. And now look where it is. It's at 70 and it's um, this leg D. So this will hint to me that there could be a, an E and then an F and even a G, and that'll coincide maybe with the Dow going to a peak B with a lower high in the next day or two, and then a leg C goes to a peak C and then a leg D. And then you're kind of in sync. Okay, that's what I'm looking at. So I'm suspecting it's sometime early in December that we start to see the, the weakness in the semis and the QQQ maybe start to impact the general market. But right now you've got some freedom. And if you're looking at the BTC, which is the Bitcoin, it's down 2,980 at uh, 96,507. The continuous contract went to 100,000, 170 something, was it? 1,000, yeah, 170, uh, 70 um, on Friday. 
So, um, yeah, we've touched the 100,000 area. Now, I have a whole rule about these millenniums and millennials, millennials, uh, millennium, millennials, millenniums, um, thousand uh, levels. And in this case, it's a tenfold millennium at 100,000. Uh, what happens? Now, in the weekly chart, I've got this as a leg C. But actually, I'm, I'm thinking of it more as a D. The, the GBTC, which is the Bitcoin Investment Trust, is a D. The IBID uh, is trading in leg IBID. Uh, the IBIT, <laughs> wrong, wrong symbol, is in leg D. That's the iShares Bitcoin Trust ETF. Yeah, we've been long for a little while now. It's trading at 54, 79. Uh, it looks like this could be a peaky. Maybe there's a bit of a pullback, but the 9 is so strong over the 14. This shows internal strength is still excellent. I'll be back. We've got a lot of questions I'll get to as soon as I return. Basil Chapman sitting in for Steve Rhodes. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman sitting for the uh, uh, not feeling that well, uh, Steve Rhodes. And we're looking at the um, IB, 
IBRX, which is uh, Immunity Bio Inc. Oncology Treatments uh, at 525 by 15 cents. So this is just beginning. You can see uh, the that sharp move to the 750-ish area back in October. So and this is typical bio biotech. You look at it and you see um, struggles to hold gains. And then all of a sudden there's FDA, discount, whatever it is, it's just an approval sitting there and you'll suddenly see a news-related spike and then it gives back. The difference with uh, Immunity BioInc is that if you, although it looks very poor in terms of the pattern itself, if I was to do this, there, if I was to do that, get rid of that big candle that went uh, up into the... Uh, what did I say it was into the 40 area uh, earlier on uh, in 2020 or so. Uh, look, this is sort of a really good move. And in fact, you can see the spikes that I'm talking about, those wicks along the, the shadows of the candle. Um, this is typical biotech. So all I can say is that it seems to be building some kind of a base, and that base is at 472, the 200 period exponential moving average in the daily chart. The resistance is at 553 in the 200 period moving average of the weekly chart. So it needs to clear this candle right here, the candle of the 11th of November, 588. It needs to get not to 589. It needs to get to the, I'd say $6 area. If it any point in the next, I'm going to give it two weeks. Uh, why not? It takes time. In the next two weeks, if it spikes to $6, first of all, if it spikes to five ninety, that is very impressive. If it continues that day or the very following session to go to the $6, basically what it's saying is I've got myself another rally that you've got to use as a trading position. But most importantly, the weekly chart is starting to see the nine period moving average close over the 14 period moving average because it went pink and then green for one session, pink for two sessions, and then uh, maybe for one session, and now it's green again. You want to see that green expanding. You want to see the distance, the aperture between the nine and the 14 expand. You've already got that in the MACD. The stochastic's flat at 43%. You want to see the, the stochastic at, oh, I would say 58, preferably 63 or higher percent. And then I think you can see that 6 become a 7. So it's a stair-step move. It seems to do that in uh, spikes, sudden spikes. The, the big one was back in March or so where it risk kept going to higher highs and then went to a D. But that's not the point. The point is this is, I'm going to put this in as B right now, and you want to see it get into the midpoint of this wick, the inverted green Chapman Wave Roman candle. You want to see it trading for a whole day above 643. That's going to be the best thing. So looking out, it's a lousy monthly chart. Uh, looking out, the weekly chart has started to improve, but there's a um, pyramid pattern where you've gone straight up and then straight down. Eh, I don't like that at all. Uh, let me just put this in here, show you something. Here's the plumb line right there. That's the from the low to the high of 10.53, the week of the 3rd of May. Look at this. Click. And what do we get? We get... Bar symmetry attempt. And it didn't go down to the low of 312. Maybe it did. Oh, it went to 319. Yeah, it didn't go down. And this is the first time that you can see that you can start to make a cup for potential cup formation. So what am I saying? Saying six is the most important number in the short term. Um, if we can get to 6.1 Roman candle right there, 6.27 and hold for a day, there's a chance it'll try for the high of that bar, which is uh, 5.80, uh, 6.41. If it does that, then that high that was made right there at uh, 7.48, 
back in the week of the 25th of October. All of this is contingent on it not closing even one day below this low right here, 4.43, the low of the 15th of November. All right, it's just it's it's trying to build a base. That's really what it's doing. And in the very short term, on a visual level, you can see you've almost got yourself. You, you need another higher high to be able to say, "Hey, that's looking good." All right, <laughs> but it's a biotech. Anything can happen. All right. Next question came in. Uh, it's about recently became a commercial oncology company with the approval of Anctiva for bladder cancer. Their first reporting quarter beat analyst estimates, top and bottom line. And while I'm interested as an investor, prayers to the patients needing this. Yeah, it's terrible. That, that's one oh, terrible disease. Okay. Uh, QUBT, -E I think I did that. This is that a new question coming in. Look at HTZ. Ah, Marty, don't tell me. Let me I'm going to close my eyes, press the button. Is it making higher highs? Oh, this showed up as a scream. I have a screamer list. And the other day, and I said, why would anybody think it hurts in this environment? We'll be doing well. No, it's not doing well. On a, today, it's doing great. It's up 16.5%, up 67% at 4.75. That is really impressive. Hertz Global Holdings, that's a nice economic uh, uh, benchmark besides the individual company. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, you've been following this, Marty, and congratulations. I did not dabble in it, and it was perfect. It did everything. The nine period moving average held. Uh, it was just silly. Like, it was the same as Sylventum, where everything's in, you just don't press the button. All right, hi, Basil. When do you think the SMH will start to take off again? Is it better to start a position now before the rotation back into them happens? Can you look at APLD? It is a stock that NVIDIA itself disclosed that it is buying for their own portfolio. Happy Thanksgiving, Eddie. Eddie, back at you. Uh, let me do this. I want to show you something. You see the move in the SMHs. You see the way it keeps making lower lows. You see the, the time sequence where it was almost the same, and this is a good opportunity to, for it to power much higher. I don't think so. I think that it's stuck. I don't see it breaking down just yet. I think at the end of not this week, sometime next week, I think it's going to take out 235 support. So I'm going to answer your question in a little bit more detail. And in the break, I'll go to APLD, Applied something, I'm sure. Applied Digital. Oh, yeah, I've done this. I've got this note. I thought it was familiar. It's in leg E in the weekly chart and leg C in the daily chart, independently moving up. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, sitting here for Steve Rhodes. Be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Keckstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi folks, Bowser Trapper sitting for uh, Steve Rhodes. We're looking at peak A, big B, and leg C. All right, so I've got Applied Application Corporation, A. PLD, Eddie mentioned this and is absolutely correct. 10.51, up 66 uh, today, up 6.7%. Uh, DE in the weekly chart. Yeah, so let me just say that the rotation within sectors, that's really what you're going to be looking at. Um, and that's very important because what we're seeing is that this is in that uh, in the semiconductor area. And because it's got the backing of NVIDIA, it's doing really well. It made a peak D way back in 2021, up in the 34s, plummets down to uh, oh, what, like, oh, two or something like that, one or two, and now it's trading at uh, 10.55. So that looks good. Now, the way you phrased it, my suspicion is you already have this in your portfolio. I, I like it. I think it can actually hold, because that's what you're looking at, something that has support in a poor a a sector. That's, that's important. I wouldn't put too much money in it because it's in a lousy sector. It could be dragged down. But this is doing nicely. I'm just saying to you, eight, nine, nine, twenty-three to eight, fifty. That whole area is key support over the next two weeks. So that's what we're looking at. So let me just say to you, let's look at this together. I don't see any reason to get into SMHs at this point. They could have a, a, a catch-up phase. But it's just, there are too many. So look, here's advanced micro devices. Pull back, pull back, pull back. Has a bounce fails. Pulls back, pull back. 227 was the high back in March of 2024 this year. But then it goes to 120 something. And now it's trading at 140, making lower lows and lower highs. I, I'm, I just think the sector has its work cut out for it. So I'd be careful. Um, now, if you're looking at this longer term and you've done your homework and you actually like it, I'd say if you get in at 244, I would just tiptoe in. I'd, I'd have a position. Why? Because if it goes to 251, that'll be really good. You can add to it. But I, I wouldn't do anything right now. I do think it's in a retest, the Chamber Wave inside track propellant zone, and that goes all the way down to, and that if it does this, if it goes down to 237, then you've got your, your weekly chart's going to start to look like a big C1, C2 top and a dreaded H pattern. I I don't see any reason to actually, there are other areas that I'd be getting in. Another question came in. Um, Basil, you spoke about Bitcoin and gold as a relationship to Robinhood, which I believe you're long. Uh, uh, hood. Uh, do you still see that relationship? Yeah. So look, Robinhood spiked in leg D. 
But the weekly chart, I've still got only as a C, and Robert Markets Inc., uh, HOOD is the symbol up dollar fifty, up four percent today at thirty eight sixteen. Nice recovery high. I I think that this is still looking good to me. The fact that gold, which where's gold right now? It's down seventy six. Oh, it's come back from the eighty low. <laughs> yeah, this is not looking great. But I, you've got Bitcoin, but Bitcoin is getting a little toppy, a little toppy right here, uh, under a hundred thousand, around the hundred thousand. There, it's at ninety six. Uh, and seventy dollars, ninety-six thousand and seventy, uh, down three point three thousand four fifteen. Yeah, so I think at this point, this is going to be a big clue to me. Uh, we're in the sixteen area, and it's trading at thirty-eight. This is Robin Hood. Um, I'm looking to add on a big pullback, but at this particular point. At D, I'm saying just be a little careful. So, yes, I have used it. It's giving me the same kind of information throughout gold and Bitcoin. Just on the very short term, it was being independent of gold. But now I think I'm going to watch the two together. Uh, so all I can say is that, no, I would not be getting in a new position in, in Robin Hood. I'm waiting for a pullback towards the uh, maybe the 33 to 32 area, and then we'll decide whether we add back. We've taken a little bit off as money management. That's what we're doing there. Um, now, another question came in. So that was Hertz. Uh, yeah, let me just make a note of that. That was HTZ. Oh, nice. Uh, okay. Uh, the, you know, I'm putting Hertz in the I, uh, PBI, uh, Pitney Bowes. Didn't I? Did I do Pitney Bowes? PBI? I thought I did. In the same category, kind of a forgotten stock, and then all of a sudden it finds some support. Pitney Bowes should be going to a leg D at some point uh, in the eight, uh, maybe the eight sixties or so. But it must hold seven seventy seven. Who 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 said Pitney Bowes? Uh, PBI. Uh, yeah, so I don't know if I did that, but this is acting very nicely. Walking the line period moving average in the weekly chart. It's in, in business instruments or something. I can't remember. It's a famous name, Pitney Bowes. Um, fine, ben. Uh, let's see, a question came in here. Good morning, Basil. Thanks again for being the work workaholic you are. Yeah, yeah, I like to. I love this. Could you look at OMF? OMF. OMF. Yeah, this is, this is the age that you're supposed to retire and travel the world. But I, this is such fun. All right. Well, it's only fun if you're actually doing well, right? Um, okay, so let's just do this. So I'm not going to do the whole thing. I just want to get tell, tell you where I am right here. A, 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 B overlapping. Uh, th no, this is called the Chapman Wave restart, not an instant restart, and it's very positive when it kicks in. It fails at a peak A, a B, and then pulls back, comes to an A, another A, another lower A, and then boom, B, and then an overlapping C and a D. So what is this? And an E. All right. It look, looks a little stretch, pretty technically on the daily. The weekly chart is still acting very well. And this is called uh, one one main, one main holding ink. I don't know what they do, but yeah, this is very nice action. And now let me go to the price. It's trading at 57. A, B, C, D, E. This is going to be a brand new A. I'm just going to get a G slash B. A G slash A. Wow. Okay. Very nice. So this is trading at 57.45. Maybe you can tell me what they do. Uh, yeah, mail machine stuff. Yeah, but who needs mail machine stuff? Anyway, it's working. Uh, okay. Um, I have a small position, up 20% and adding, looking to add for long term. Yes, you know, I, I, I can't tell what they do. Um, I'd like to know what they do. One, what did I say it was? One main holding. Let me just put this in here. No, not that one. This one. Okay. Okay. What does it do? Oops. Click. There it is. Okay. One main holding. Ah, 
Ah, yes, uh, when I was said, let's get some symbols. I wasn't talking about the uh, Zildjian uh, symbols, famous uh, symbols. I was talking about the letters. Oh, we've got a break coming up. I need to look at this OMF. Uh, what did I say? One, one main holding does. As we go to the break, it'll tell me one way. A financial service company that offers personal loans, credit cards, insurance. And oh, okay, this goes with SoFi and Opt Opfa that I have. Yes, yes. I like this. I'll be back and we'll talk about it. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Hi, folks. Final segment. Hopefully, uh, Steve's well enough to uh, be back tomorrow. We miss him. And let's look at this. So, um, OMF is one main holdings, financial services, personal loans, credit cards, insurance. I, I could see by the chart that this was in that favored sector right now. So it made a high of 60.51 on the in August in the monthly chart. And then in September, it made a high of 60.38. So that was just uh, 20 cents or so less. And I think that that would be my target right now, 60. And then let's deal with it after that. I, congratulations. That's a really nice uh, choice. And uh, <clears throat> let me just quickly see anything here. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Megapi. And uh, yeah, that's the one because I, so, so far, is in that same area, I believe. Oh, come on. Type, type, type. There it is. S O F I. Uh, there it is. Yeah. Very nice. Look at that. Boy, that's a lot of denners have that. And OPFI. 
Opfi, I mentioned to subscribers over the weekend in my video that I liked very much. Uh, look at that. At the 200 period moving average, up uh, 27 cents at 7.88. And that's Opfi Inc. Credit for overlooked individuals, installment loan products. That's probably even a better one. So, yeah, I hope that helps you. So, I'm going to be wrapping it up here. So, check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. We've had some really nice uh, positions up uh, 30, 40, some even 100, 100% uh, winners. <clears throat> Got a little loser. We had that. UNG, but now it's come right back again, um, but that happens. So with that said, uh, keep an eye on the close today. I, it's, I thought to myself uh, when I was going to start, I don't know if I think, I thought I said it, maybe I didn't. I said at the beginning of Steve's show that my target in this session over the next uh, hour or two could be the 59.98 200 period moving average of the 10 minute chart of the E-mini. But we, I think we've made the high for the day and maybe tomorrow's week and then a nice bounce on Friday, on Wednesday, going into the Thanksgiving uh, period. Okay, um, have a great day. Check out uh, my opening call and I will see you tomorrow. Uh, uh, best to Steve. Hope to see you tomorrow. See you soon.